Tuesday, April the 25th, 2023, nine, about 9.09. 9. It's we're long in there. And uh, regular meeting, Liberty County Commissioner's Court. Um, record show that Commissioner Parbaz, Commissioner Arthur, and Commissioner Whitmire are here. Commissioner Wilson's with us on Zoom. And so we do have a quorum established and we do have business for the court this morning. Uh, if y'all would all rise, Lee, if you can lead us in the pledge this morning. Okay. And Sheriff will lead us in the invocation. Please face the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please face the Texas flag. I am the Texas flag. I am the Texas flag. Pray with me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the blessings that you give us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the judge, the commissioners, and the, the duties that they've accepted to help this county, Lord. I thank you for all the elected officials, all the employees, Lord. I just ask that you be with each and every one of us and let us do the things that you would have us do. Lord, I know that there's a lot of people that are not feeling well. I ask that you be with the sick. Thank you for the medicines, the doctors, the talents you give them, Lord. And I ask, Lord, that your will be done. And, and if it is to be them, point it back to their health, please do so. Lord, as we go through this meeting, be with us. Let us accept the decisions made by the court. Let us support them. Lord, thank you again for the dedication. Thank you for your son, Jesus, that died on the cross for our sin. Your son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sheriff. Well, Nene, we didn't have any notices or proclamations today. All right. Yeah, really, there's no public comment, but... Uh, but we will have some comment, Lee. Would I you have, have a great comment? Sure. Um, so people have been asking about uh, polling locations and times that they're open. The uh, early voting locations are in Dayton, Dayton Community Center, Liberty, Jack Cartel Building, Hardin, Hardin City Hall, and Cleveland Civic Center. This week, from Monday through Friday, they're open 9 to 6. Next Monday and Tuesday, May 1st and May 2nd, they will be open from 7 to 7. The election day will be May 6th, that's a Saturday, and we're still signing up people to work that election, so if you're interested, give us a call. All right. If they need to give you a call, what's your phone number? Oh, good. Gotcha. Sorry. <laughs> it's very long hours lately. Uh, call the office at 936 336-4670. Thank you. All righty. And uh, last night, we had an interesting meeting, uh, just for those of y'all that didn't make it. Some of y'all did, uh, with uh, the Aggies and TxDOT, which was really kind of unique that we had uh, the Texas Target Communities Group that helped us with our first strategic plan for economic development for the entire county. Uh, in 15 and 16, we adopted it in 17. And then so we started on the second go round. So these are actually a living document that you have to update ever so often. And uh, what we did after the first one, we shared those with the cities. The cities uh, followed suit. And our economic development is looking better and better every day because of this. So this go round, we. Uh, we're going to focus on what was in the first uh, economic development strategic plan, but we had some embellishments such as more emphasis on transportation. Hallelujah. Uh, also uh, more emphasis on drainage because sometimes it's a problem around here. And then another one was, uh, and Sheriff, you'll like this, it's on uh, health care and mental health. So, that uh, those are some things that uh, are a concern, more than a concern, because if you know as well as I do, and and I know Dwayne and Kim know, mental health is expensive, really expensive. So uh, the uh, the whole idea is to get this out in the public so they can understand exactly what we're up against and how we're going to do our best to to create a plan to win one way or the other. 
Uh, TxDOT was there. They did discuss projects that are ongoing, projects that are five years out, five years, uh, 10 years out. And then they answered questions about procurement, which when you think about that, how do you pay for a project? Hey, that's not a howdy doody question. That was one that was real. And people don't understand just how long it takes to get a project from start to finish and the cost that's associated and where we had to ask for our funding from. So um, it's not a magic wand moment. So anyway, that, that was good. We finished up about nine o'clock last night. The Aggies went back to A&M and uh, Textile went back to Beaumont and here we are this morning. So thank y'all for coming. Okay. Uh, Next item is declare conflicts of interest. Anybody have any reason to clear a conflict today? <clears throat> Hearing none, we'll move on. Uh, consent agenda. Dwayne, we have any add-ons today? Oh, no. Yeah? I do. Okay. I mean, I, Ms. Chambers has asked that we pay Ms. Hope Cross for her overtime on the election work um, today. I know there will be quite a bit more, but this is what we have for today, 22 hours at $40.39 for a total of $888.62 in this cross. Glad to put it in. Anybody else keep those cards coming? Yeah. Move to approve consent agenda with Kim Zell. Second. Motion. Got a. Can you hear me? Yeah. Y'all have a drink? It barely. How about now? Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, I'll make the motion that we... Um, uh, we already got a motion and a second, Leon. Well, you, some discussion. you want to offer some discussion, we can do that. I, I'm sorry, I apologize. I didn't hear it. I was trying to make a motion. Apparently, y'all couldn't hear me, but uh, let's, let's, yeah, I'm going to open this for discussion on uh, item three, budget amendment. I'd like to remove the district attorney uh, create DA position and secretary position. And let's put that on a uh, regular uh, agenda for uh, the purpose of discussion of this. Okay, in that case, we already have a motion in a second, uh, but he couldn't hear us. So let's go ahead and, and give the opportunity so we can discuss this. We can move that over to a, a regular Agenda item. What I prefer, if possible. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't have a problem with that. No, what, uh, wait, what now? It. We have a motion to second to pass the consent agenda. Okay. Leon was wanting to say something, but we he couldn't hear us. We couldn't hear him very well. So. Still say something. Yeah. It. Uh, but he wanted to move it to a regular agenda item, which is fine. We can do that. Well, we got to vote on it first. Um. No, actually, we can move it to an agenda item. What are you going to do with the motion in a second? We can go ahead and resend those and, and say, let's move it over to, I, I would say, let's go ahead and pull it out there in the open. That way, there's no uh, no arguments. Uh, no, I, prefer, it's, it's, it's a point. Well, we couldn't discuss it then, <laughs> right now. Well, I would prefer. You want to discuss it right now? I would prefer, if possible, to put, it, put this on the next commissioner's court agenda. And uh, open it up for discussion. I'm not willing to do that. No, sure. let's just go ahead and put it on regular. Let me put it on the agenda. Uh, uh, move it to the regular agenda today, and we'll, we'll knock it out right now. No, that's not what he's worried about. No, that's what we're going to do though. I mean, it, it's it, what it is. Is he wants to discuss it, and I know he wants to know what the numbers are uh, and why. Also had the same question coming from over here to my left. I don't have a problem with that. I would prefer to get the numbers out there and see. Uh, let everybody know that it costs this much and why. Right. So let's uh, why don't we change that motion, Bruce? To, Any problem with that? He made the motion. I just seconded it. Okay. Uh I would say that, um, you know, it's not on the agenda as a regular agenda item. Mm -hmm. um, so that that would be a concern for me. 
Well, you can know we had that right to move it from a consent agenda to the regular agenda. We can move it out for discussion. We okay. just have to add it. It's on the agenda. It's just, it's just not under the agenda. Right. So I will say this. Let's just open it up for discussion. Okay. So let's discuss it. It's open for discussion. <clears throat> You'll move forward now? Yeah. Can you turn up a little bit, Leon? I'm having a hard time hearing you. Doing the best with what I have to offer. Um, I um, for what it's worth, Leon, I have it down as agenda item eight twenty one. I'm sorry. It will, it's now agenda item eight twenty one at the very bottom. Okay. So to discuss and approve. The district attorney creating an ADA position for 123.090 and 47 cents as secretary for 39,600. Let me uh, clarify this. Uh, those salaries are, are an annualized salary uh, based off the cost of this year's budget. So well, we're halfway into the we're halfway into the budget now. Right, well, so, well, yeah. yeah. Okay, who wants to start? Well, first off, doesn't the motion need to be rescinded first? Okay. Well, well, let's. Well, like, well, he didn't hear. Yeah, since he didn't hear, he, so that's because he's not here. I know, but uh, let's show a little respect there on that behalf and say, why don't we rescind that motion? Okay. Jay. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. And in, in order to address Commissioner Kowalski's uh, statement. Yes, sir. Uh, I pray to God that you don't ever have to go through what I'm going through. And then you would understand and know the reason why I'm not there, but I'm here now. Well, uh, that's we, fine. We wasn't, I was talking about on the Zoom camera itself. The audio and the video. Okay. So... Greg made the motion. Let's rescind the motion. First move the second, rescind the second. We'll vote to say we're going to move it to the regular agenda and let us discuss about that. And it'll work okay. Believe me. Okay. Okay. All right. We've got a motion to rescind the consent agenda. Uh, also to rescind the second on the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Likewise, nays. Nay. All right. Now, since we we're moving number three on the budget amendments, number three, I guess, number B, we're going to call that 8.21 now in the regular agenda. District attorney create ADA position and secretary position. Uh Okay. Insurance. Excuse me, wait a minute. Since we've already taken that off now, can we make a motion to approve the consent agenda? And let's get that behind us with that item off of it. I believe we can do that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I make a motion. We, we okay. approve. I'm a little behind. Who who was first and second on the motion to send the original motion? Okay. It was me and Brooke who made the motion, and we okay. withdrew our motion. Okay. And second. Okay. And then this is moved to this is moved to a separate agenda item. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now I make a motion that we go ahead and approve the rest of the consent agenda okay. with the addition that Kim made. And then we will okay. go from there. Yeah. <laughs> second. One second that motion. All right. Only consent agenda <laughs> with the notations that we have now. All in favor say aye. Uh, Likewise, nays. Okay, that consent agenda passes with Kim's addition and with the uh, moving what we call now 8.21 to the regular agenda. Since we're on 8.21, let's discuss 8.21. Okay, and that is the district attorney create an ADA position, assistant DA position, and secretary position. And then uh, juvenile insurance proceeds to repair a vehicle. Okay, so Leon, do you want to start the discussion off? I'd like to know 
what is the purpose of this? I mean, why why are we're about six, seven months into the budget and all of that? You know, we're all of a sudden adding additional employees uh, and cost to the budget. The budget's been set. Okay. Ms. Berman, you want to address that question? I would love to. So, uh, Commissioner, uh, I guess starting in August of this past year, but we really started getting it rolling in, in September of, of this past fall, we started a quasi-direct file system whereby every time someone's arrested, we receive their PC affidavit from the jail. We file information and complaints on every case that comes through every arrest case. That gives the district court jurisdiction over these cases. And we just now are starting to have PC dockets to where we can also um, immediately after someone is arrested within 30 days, we're getting them on a docket so we can get them into court and try to resolve their cases. Um, we have filed over 700 uh, information to complaint somewhere in that vicinity between 675 and 700 as of last week since August, September of this past year. So that's 700 new cases in addition to the, the ones that are non-arrest cases and direct to grand jury cases. And so we've taken a com an antiquated system, moved it to what would be a modern system, and going forward, it, it it's going to just keep expanding. In doing this, it's created a whole lot of additional work because it opens up discovery um, to defense counsel earlier. We're, we're trying to get people out of our jail. We're trying to move cases earlier and quicker before they have to go to grand jury because cases are getting bogged yeah. down here as well. And given the sheer volume of information, digital media, all of the large files that are coming over and the onus on prosecutors and law enforcement agencies to make sure everything is turned over, we're really at a point where it's overwhelming for our office and the prosecutors handling this intake and the, the complaints and information and the sheer volume of discovery. And so that's why we're asking for this right now. We don't obviously see a, a reason to believe that we're going to have a decline in the number of cases. It's going to continue to just completely rise. Let's see, Ms. Bergman, you have seven prosecutors to include yourself. Is that correct? That's correct. How many, how many uh, secretaries do you have? Is it nine? Am I right? I, I believe, hold on, one... Seven. I have seven and I have two victims assistance coordinators. They're not, they have to deal with victims. Okay. Um, I understand the uh, the process of the info and complaint, information and complaint. And you're saying you want to move the cases. <clears throat> I understand that. But assess me here, educate me, okay? Uh, the only way you're going to be able to move the cases is, is under indictment unless the defendant waives indictment. Is that correct? Correct. And oftentimes they do. Counties that have seen um, the implementation of a, of a direct file or a quasi-direct file, which is what we have, um, they see a 30 to 40 percent of their cases are pled pre-indictment. So most defendants, um, especially on lower level cases, will not languish in jail. They'll plead their cases out. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Ms. Bergman, <clears throat> since you've taken off, how many cases have you tried? I don't think that that's relevant to this. I do. You're, you're, you are elected as a district correct. attorney. To correct. Correct. cases, correct? Um, sometimes, yes. Sometimes, how, no. How many cases have you tried? I haven't tried any since I've taken office because I, I took over an office that was in complete and total shambles, and we've tried to bring it from the dark ages and in compliance with the law and in compliance with Morton. And it has taken months, if not years, to be able to do that. I have a number of cases on the trial docket that should be going to trial shortly. Thank you. Uh, let's uh, let's get back to your, let's say your first assistant, um, Ms. Anna. Correct. Uh, been with you, what now, a couple of years? No, she's been with me less than a year. She arrived last year in May. How many cases has she tried since she's been hired? Um, I believe she's tried one, if not two. 
Okay. The, the 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 number of cases we tried is dependent on what the court set on the trial docket and what they call to to try. We don't have control over the court's docket. Okay. Um, so we we had a trial yesterday, and uh, my, Mr. Barnes tried that. Yes, is you're only going to be able to move the cases that the courts uh, are available, and so you've got to. I'm using this number as a. As an example, okay, you have a big eight inch intake, but you only have a two inch discharge. So moving these cases, you're only gonna be able to do that based on what the courts can handle, correct? Correct. So adding another prosecutor, how's that gonna benefit the two inch discharge? Because we're trying to and have increased the discharge. So one of our district courts is willing to set a monthly PC docket so we can move cases. We had one last week. We moved 30 cases. Did both courts do that? Uh, the 75th has not done so, but the 253rd has done that well, and is willing to do that going forward. I have zero idea. Why is the 75th not doing this? I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't know. I can't answer that question. That's a question for the 75th. It would be beneficial if we did that. Well, I, I'm all going home for moving cases, really. I don't disagree with that at all. I don't. Uh, but to ask for another prosecutor when I've got an elected official and the first assistance that is uh, only prosecuted one case and the other one hasn't prosecuted any, but to ask for another prosecutor, I, I don't understand how that can be justified. I, I myself, and I would say probably every commissioner uh, sitting up there on that court, along with other divisions uh, in this county, need personnel. But we've got a set budget that's already been approved. We're six to seven months into it. Um, do you see to where you may be able to come back to us in uh, September to ask for that position? It's possible. But at this point, I think that the county has an extreme uh, problem with the cost of jail. I know that we're spending over $100,000 a month to house inmates out of county. And so we are trying to come up with a way to alleviate this issue. This is a suggestion on a way to do so. Um, if you don't agree with that, I, I mean, that's that's your prerogative. I don't but, disagree with it. Can we get in on this conversation a little bit? Yeah. It's not that uh, I don't disagree. Maybe. Ms. Bergman. Let me get switched. Okay. I'm well aware of the problem the sheriff's got. He's got inmates scattered all over Texas, <laughs> East Texas, and part of Louisiana. And uh, I don't, I'm not saying, that, and I don't think any of us think that this is going to completely eliminate the problem. But at this point, we've got to do what we can to help the problem. Therefore, I move that we approve this uh, second. Okay. All right. We have a motion. We have a motion to approve this item. Uh, we have a second. Is there any further discussion? Call for a vote. All favor say aye. Aye. Likewise, nays. Aye. Okay, let's make a show. There's three votes for, one vote against. And that was Mr. Wilson. Okay. Thank y'all. And I will say this as far as what the cost in the county, it's costing the heck out of us. Yeah. I believe about 110000 yeah, a little bit of yeah. let, me, let me explain something to you, Jay. I don't disagree with you. If I see that we can save money, I'm all for it. Yeah. I don't see how this is going to, uh, as I said, expedite the things that need to be taken place. Um, if she wants to come back, the vote's going to be made, but if she wants to come back, I think in September, I'd gladly sit down and discuss this with her and try to assist them any way I can. But the budget's been set. Yeah. The, the budget has been set. And any time that anyone else has come to this court and asked for a budget uh, uh, amendment, we pretty well have not allowed it. And when I have a DA and I have a first assistant that are not prosecuting cases, but they're asking for another DA, that in itself um, is, um, it doesn't settle right with me. Um, and your That's objection great. is noted, and then thank you for your input. I do appreciate it. <clears throat> Let's move on. Number 
one. Eight point one. <laughs> Uh, it's from uh, Commissioner Karbowski. You have an air local agreement between Liberty County and the Drainage District 1. They're still in business? Okay, just checking. Co cooperate mutually in maintaining streets, roads, ditches, and recreational areas. Provide better service to the public, reduce expense by uh, avoiding duplication of manpower and other resources. Your standard air local. Justice. Got a motion, David, to approve. Second. Salem, Greg. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those names. Thank you all. Number two, pretty much the same thing, except we're going to be looking at uh, between Liberty County and City of Dayton and Commissioner Precinct 1. See if we can make things better in a more timely manner. Got a motion from Greg. Second, Second from David. All in favor say aye. Aye. Likewise, nay. That motion carries. Thank you. Number three for Mr. Brown. So, Brother Rick, if you come on up here, let's talk about considering and approving the annual property strike cost by the county tax assessor collector. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this is kind of our annual process where we take any uh, account, delinquent account that's over 20 years on real property and 10 years on personal property that is not carried over by a judgment or a suit. So basically it's the statute of limitations that invokes, or you can keep this up to 20 years of taxes on real property and 10 on personal property. So anything that exceeds that, we try to come in and clean up so that we're just having those. Now, if they are protected by a judgment, that stays on forever, you know, until that case is resolved. So uh, I know we started this about three years ago, four years ago, mm -hmm. and we're trying to do it each April. Uh, so you look under the summaries for all the entities, and we sent this to each entity to review. Um, for, for Liberty County, it involves 5,806 transactions for a total dollar figure of 126995503 so that just takes that off. Again, another year gets added. So it's not like you know we're, we're losing right now, uh, 1992, but we're gaining 2022. Yeah. So um, just a note: if you look at the lot, last line SDY, which is Dayton ISD, kind of draws your attention. It's 10,000 transactions for 317,000. They actually have questioned that, and we're looking back now because they were doing an annual process, but we think when we converted back in October, some of the judgments didn't carry forward. So uh, we, we, you know, we drew a lot of attention saying, why was it that much? Have y'all been doing it? They said, yeah, we do it every year. So we're not taking that action, but this it's part of your record here. So we're, you know, we're not gonna actually close out on theirs until they give us more information on that. Cause we think there's some of those that will be held by judgment, just not reflected in our, in our program. So anyway, that's what I'm asking for is your approval today. You have that right under the statute to strike off properties and it just keeps the records a little more accurate. Any questions? All right. Make a motion to approve. Thank you. Motion from Bruce, take from Leon to approve. Any further discussion? Wow. The none. All in favor say aye. 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 That motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, sir. Uh, number four from Commissioner Wilson. Consider approved the request from Commissioner Wilson to attend virtually the 2023 TAC County Technology Conference May 16th through the 19th. Authorization of online attendance must be approved by Commissioner's Court order. Um, Thank you, motion to approve. Second. Got a motion from Bruce. Second from Greg. All in favor say aye. aye. Likewise, nays. That motion carries. Also, number five from Commissioner Wilson. Senator approved the request of Commissioner Wilson to attend virtually the 2023 TAC County Technology Conference, August 30th and September 1st. Authorization of online tents must be approved by Commissioner's Court Order. And you. Leon, you catching up on, on your hours, huh? Yeah, I'd. Uh... 
I don't like sitting behind a computer attending these things, but at, at this point in time, I'm. Yeah. Hey, it's understandable. It, uh, motion to approve. Yeah, motion. Bruce. Second. Greg. All in favor say aye. 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 Likewise, Dave. That motion carries. Number six. Uh, consider and approve an agreement for detention of juvenile offenders from Liberty County and Galveston County Juvenile Probation Facility. Uh, this agreement is for a period of one year beginning September 1st through August 31st, 2024. And we just need a place where we can house the youngsters as they come through our court system. Like a motion to approve. Got a motion from David. Second. Second from Greg. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Likewise, nay. That motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Number seven is Mr. Douglas. Oh, Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Let's consider and approve the GLO draw request three, four, five, and six. These draws originate from the housing buyout program and ask for reimbursement to Liberty County as follows. I like to bundle these up. Yeah, well, it makes it a lot easier yeah, on reading, doesn't it? Makes it a little easier, doesn't Yeah. Well, this is this is basically Mr. Arthur's project. Yeah. It's confined within his uh, precinct. Mm -hmm. But the project is moving forward. Um, it's been a little bit of an arduous task, but the paperwork was monstrous. And it is. It, uh, Wayne and Angela had, had to take care of most of it. So today we've got these, these one, two, three, four draws. Three through six for a total of $117,992.38. So we're asking you to approve these forms. That way we can get them signed off on. These are some of the documents, Commissioner Harper, that you signed and the judge signed. So later today, I think DD will have these documents for you. You can get them signed off on. I'll get them scanned back in and get them to Ronnie and uh, Ronnie Smith. Yeah, with uh, grant works, and we'll get a draw done. And this just pass through funds, right? These are pass through funds. Okay. And right now we're we're bumping in we're a little over a million bucks. Yeah. Uh, with this action and the action that'll follow it on the end, of the way, okay, uh, we're over a million dollars. So we ask you to approve uh, draws three, four, five, and six today. Yeah. All right. What's well, court's pleasure? Make my approve. Second. Got a motion from Greg, second from Bruce to further discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Likewise, nay. That motion carries. Thank you, David. Thank you. No, don't run off too far. We still got a couple of right here. All right. <laughs> Number eight is from, uh, well, JP up in precinct six, Judge Fuller. Consider and approve the purchase of two CamPro 01826. 1296P waterproof. Evidently, that's high definition police body cameras. They cost $308.42. And five, I guess it's a rugged jet R62R6423B mobile jet printers with USB Bluetooth. NFC pairing includes a two year premier warranty. It's almost like a commercial. The DOC jet roll holder should stop, strain relief, clip belt. And I don't know if that's a zip line or what, but anyway, the cost for five printers $2,989.30. The total amount of this purchase is $3,297.72 be paid from the JP Technology Fund. We approve. Thank you. Appreciate it, Leon. Second. Got a motion from Leon. Second from Greg. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Why is that? That motion carries. Number nine from uh, Mr. Post, our county attorney. And uh, consider and approve data use agreement with Texas Department of Health and Human Re Services for access to birth certificates in the county clerk's office. Um. Catherine? Or if Lee. Maybe you address it. Yes. Um, we got a new contract from the state. It's uh, the contract that allows us to use their system to issue birth certificates. I guess it was time for renewal, and I was so busy, I turned it over to Matt. But it's your basic uh, agreement that we can use their text ever system. And for every birth certificate we, you know, issue, we pay them a certain amount of money. 
And this has been the standard procedure going forward. So, mm -hmm. but you collect the money from Oregon. We collect the money, and then um, yeah. yes, they send us a bill every month, and we pay them. So uh, to use to use their system, yeah. but it's we, the state health services takes over system. We've reviewed the contract and they're not used. Yes. Okay. Move we approve. Got a motion, from Greg. Second. Second, and Bruce to approve. Further discussion. All in favor say aye. aye. Likewise, nays. That motion carries. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Lee. And thank you, Catherine. Uh, number 10, David, come on back up. Uh, consider and approve GLO draw request seven and eight. These draws represent funds that have been expended in the housing buyout program and are now due back to Liberty County. I'm sure yeah. Dwayne will be happy to hear that. Yeah. Uh, the draw amount also includes a pay request from HDR Incorporated and covers appraisal services associated with the housing program. Basically, what we're asking commissioners to do today is approve draw number seven for $906,433.69. We're asking you to approve draw number eight, which is $1,042.51. Both of these will be coming back to Liberty County. The final request here in this grouping is that we get your approval to pay an invoice from HDR Incorporated in the amount of $1,042.51. That is an appraisal fee uh, with uh, with this housing buyer. <coughs> so we got two draws and one pay request. Yeah. Dwayne, any problem with those? It looks like past the money again, right, Angela? Is that pretty much? Okay. Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion from Bruce, uh, second from Leon, I believe it was. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Likewise, nay. Is that motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Gentlemen. Thank you. Number 11 for Mr. C. Come on up there, uh, Harold. And uh, consider and Bruce listing bids for a used chip spreader for Road and Bridge One. Single offer bids. Okay. Like multiple chip yeah, Motion. David. Second from Greg. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Number 13. Harold is uh, considered approved installation. Quote from Motorola for a new radio in the amount of $100,414 through HGAC contract RA number 0521. And uh, where is this radio? Uh, this is Mr. Hergemeyer radios. Okay. Uh, we've had some time getting a good quote from them or tell us how many radios. I just want to give us a number. We finally got, I think, what's a good quote that kind of tells us in detail uh, how many radios. Okay. I think it's 169 for the county and I think 72, I think, for the fire departments. Wasn't it coming out of the funds? Yes. Yes. Make a motion to approve. Second. Got a motion from Bruce to approve, second from David. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Likewise, nay. Did you skip the will? Huh? For the uh, program. Yes. Oh, I thought that's what you voted on. Did I miss? Did I, did I, I report yeah, we did. We well, did I well. Some, I heard some insulation in there. But... No, we did 12 earlier. Okay. And that was a motion it. by David and second by it. Greg. Okay, and now we did the installation. Okay, so you don't hang around a little longer. Nah, really? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do that. We just did 12. We need to do 13. Okay. And what I have, Bruce made the motion. Did you get that? And that, that, that was on 12. What do you got on 12? Ah. <laughs> and David, right? My dyslexia is kicking in, yeah. guys. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me go back there. Come on back up, Harold. We're not fine. Same commentary with the other one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was uh, okay. We did the pro. We didn't do the programming yet. So okay. consider approved programming quote from Harris County Radio for new radios in the amount of. $23,755. Make a motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Bruce made the motion. David made the second. Now, any further discussion? 
All in favor say aye. aye. Black Lives Matter. Is that motion carried? <coughs> Back on target. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm caught up. Okay. <laughs> I just got excited. I mean, it's like, man, man, we're, we're doing radios right now. I'm, I'm happy as I can be. It's something we've been trying to do for eight years. Right, Sheriff? Yes, sir. Boy. Okay, number 14. We're all in agreement. Uh, this is from Sheriff Rader. Consider and approve adding two copiers to the Liberty County Sheriff's Office contract. Um, who's supplying them? Uh, Knox, come on, come on up, Chief, and let's let's kick this in a minute. Uh, okay. What company? Platinum, Platinum. Platinum. County has a con contract um, already. Okay. And they just add two companies to the contract. Yes, and so we we have twenty five printers that are on a lease agreement. And we're filtering those out to move forward uh, with the copiers at the new office. When we're merging our, the three offices together, we had you know separate printers everywhere. Mm -hmm. and so we're we need to get rid of those so that everybody can print when they get over there. Otherwise, we're going to be doing more leases on desktop printers. And so the building, the way it was designed, set up was with workstations putting a copier in there. And so we're slowly canceling these twenty five printers. And it'll cover the cost of what we're replacing on these big copiers. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mike. Do it. Motion, David. Second, Greg. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. <coughs> Likewise, nays. That motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, number fifteen is from Mr. Dennis. Come on up, Nick. Consider and approve the sixty percent down payment to A One Telecom in the amount of fourteen thousand eight hundred five dollars and sixty six cents. The quote was approved last court. Yes, this is just to get the down payments over the equipment to get Mr. Jimmy Belt's building up and running. That's it. Okay. okay. Got a motion from David. New second. Sorry, uh, Leon, thank you. Got a second from Leon. Any further discussion? Thank you, Nick. Thank you very much. All favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Number 16. Uh, from Mr. Poston and Ms. McCarty, consider and approve a waiver of dump fees for Old River Drainage District at the Liberty County Dump in Precinct 4 and assisting Precinct 4 Road and Bridge collect and dispose of debris located along county roadways. For those of you who have table this right now, we need to talk about this report. Okay, got a motion to table. Second. Motion from Greg to the table, second for Bruce. Any further discussion? Yep. I'll say aye. Uh, I'm sorry? Yeah, this needs to be discussed. Well, I, I just said that. If you're going to discuss, I, I can't hear you, though, very well. Well, the reason this was put on there uh, by Matthew and Catherine is because of my request. Um, it's fairly simple. It's elementary. Uh, the Old River Drainage District, uh, when they're out in the fields, they, they wind up picking up these tires and trash uh, out of the uh, county road ditches. And some of it is, uh, it has went off into their big drain ditches um, from the county ditches. And so they help count the county and this precinct when picking up this trash to haul it out to the dump. And the last time they went out there, they were told that they have to pay to, to dump it. And it was, the majority of it was county trash that they had picked up for us. And uh, they're a separate taxing, taxing entity, but we also have, we also have a uh, cooperative working agreement with these folks. And they've been a big asset uh, for Liberty County and this precinct. There shouldn't be any reason why we're going to charge them to take stuff out to the dump that they picked up off the side of the roadways. Um in assisting this county, uh, there shouldn't be any reason we'd be charging them, none whatsoever. How many, how many tires are you talking about? I'm sorry? How many tires are you talking about? I think the last uh, best they had out there was maybe a pickup two or two load, you know. We do that. We do that. 
we pick that up every Monday, every Monday. That uh, that's just a that's just a just a repeated thing we have to do every Monday is pick up at least a trailer tire full of loads that's been dumped. It's a kind of a, it's kind of a pain to us trying to figure out who gets the dump ready and who has to be at the start. I'm sorry. It's kind of a, it's kind of a pain for our guys to know who gets the dump free and who gets charged. Well, it's I don't know why it's a pain when if it's passed by the commissioner's courts, the Old River Drainage District is able to uh, dump the debris that they pick up, and then every other every other drainage district and every other ESD can dump free. And well, that's up to y'all. I'm coming forth with what these folks are doing for us. Well, like right now, uh, you know, we're we're talking about having to clean up that dump out there at uh, taxpayers' expense to clean it up. Uh, I think we need to hold some of these people that are dumping in here accountable and, and start charging. I don't disagree with that. Anytime that uh, my my employees are out picking up this trash, uh, we are. Uh, I would like to table this and and and, and uh, the head of the drainage district out there. If you come by, or I'll come by and visit with him, and we'll work out something and we'll present it to Commissioner Court. That's good to me. Okay, Does that sound okay to you, uh, Leon. That's that's fine with me. But they have a load of stuff that they need to get rid of. They tried to do it last week and was unable to. And uh, I mean, it's pretty simple mathematics. So. Do is approve this so they can get to start getting this stuff to the people. Get me, get me his phone number and I'll call him after we get to the meeting and I'll go visit with him. I'll get up. Okay, got a motion uh, from Greg, second from Bruce to the table. All in favor say aye. Uh, Likewise, next. That motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Number 17 from Mr. Poston, Ms. McCarty. Uh, consider an authorized county attorney's office and outside counsel with law firm Bickerstaff, Heath, Legato, and Acosta. LLP to negotiate with K.E. Andrews with regard to their client's application for Chapter 381 Economic Development incentives related to their construction of a 2,500-acre solar panel construction project located on County Road 486 in Liberty County, Texas. Now, is that in your precinct, Bruce? Yeah, it's on Hatcherville Road. Hatcherville Road, Okay. And this is authorizing them to negotiate. Okay. Uh, Catherine? Yes, that's, that's it. This that's it. Authorize us and Chuck to, to uh, negotiate with maybe Andrews in regards to this project. Make a motion to approve. This is just for negotiation. Okay. We got a motion from Bruce, second from. Is that Greg? You make yeah. a second. Thank you. I'm having a hard time hearing everybody today. We've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Likewise, nays. Aye. We've got three ayes and one nay from Commissioner. Okay. Number 18. This is long. Uh, discussion and potential action. We need to go in executive session on these, I believe. Yes, sir. Do. Uh, on items 18 through 20. Uh, 18 now, what 18. Asset yeah. That we go into these are going to be long winded. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I would like for us to. Chuck? Can I speak? Yes, please. As to the um, uh, long agenda item, I agree. Uh, as to the. Uh, uh, Trinity River Solar One and uh, Industrial Kilo, I think it might be constructive if the court heard from the companies on their presentation on those first before a closed session discussion occurred. That would be my suggestion. Okay. Is there any way we can turn the volume up on the television? Yeah, I'm having a hard time hearing. We have that because I thought it was just Leon. It's not just Leon. It's everybody. It's everybody too. Where's yeah. The TV controller. Can you turn up the volume? I uh, have been. You got it all the way up. Can you hear me? 
Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. It is it is my understanding that representatives from the tax consultant firm of KE Andrews um, are supposed to be present regarding uh, industrial kilo as well as Trinity River One Solar. Are they in the gallery at this point? Yes. Yeah, we got Kay Andrews and we have, okay, everybody's here. There ought to be yes, Mike we Fry, Garrett Peters and Mike Fry ought to be there for their company on those projects. To hear from them from the company presentation standpoint might be instructive before closed session. Okay. So we're going to consider after we hear some discussion from these parties, uh, 18, 19, and 20, to move those into closed session, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I, I don't. I don't think Liberty uh, County Solar Project is going to make a presentation. Uh, that's a matter that's set up for uh, potential uh, approval, consideration of approval. That that can go into close first. Okay. Okay, so we want to listen to some discussion from the parties that are here now. Okay. K.E. Andrews. And that is K.E. Andrews first? Yes, sir. They're here on both um, on both. Industrial Kilo as well as uh, Trinity River Solar. Okay. It, it, is, it is my understanding that according to the applications filed with the county, that uh, Trinity River Solar One is a uh, straight tax abatement request, whereas Industrial Kilo LLC is a uh, Chapter 381 tax rebate request. If I am wrong, the company representatives can correct me. Okay. So we're going to leave this an open session and have a discussion now. So number 18 pertains to, it's a lot to read, Liberty County Solar Project. Okay. Again, they're not, they're not there to make an open presentation. That's an action item uh, to be considered after closed session. Okay. So 19 and 2019 um, is Trinity River Solar, and 20 uh, deals with uh, industrial fuel. Okay, so we want to discuss 19 and 20 in open session, correct? Correct. All right. So we can do that now. Um, okay. So 19, just getting this lined out, y'all. Oh, okay. Totally. These are coming at us like ducks in the shooting gallery. Okay. Discussion, potential action. Uh, it's not action right now, though. Okay. Sure. Shall occur, pursuant Chapter 381, Texas Local Government Code, uh, Chapter 312, Texas Tax Code, and other authority regarding following matters. A presentation. Y'all ready for presentation? Y'all start easing on up here because we're going to turn you loose in a minute. Okay. By Trinity Solar uh, River Solar One LLC regarding its proposed solar energy electricity generating facility project to be located on certain real property totaling approximately 2,400 acres, more or less, and located in eastern Liberty County. That's going to be Precinct One, correct, Bruce? Yes, it is. Near Highway U.S. Highway 90 East and FM 1009 therein and pending application for tax abatement regarding the project, uh, consideration of approval of further negotiations, if any, by Liberty County, Texas with said company regarding said project, an application, and all related matters. Uh, I do have a question for y'all. Is this 24 acres is going to be leased, bought, um, and has it been already leased or bought? Yes, it'll be leased. We're under a lease with the Henderson family there and we'll move kind of from an option period into a full lease term when before we begin construction. 
Can y'all have a how many year lease with those in so far? Um, it would extend to up to four years, including extension periods. Question. As of right now, has the option agreement been executed? Yes, sir. So there's an option to lease, but at the present time, the company owns or leases nothing, correct? Yeah, right. We have a, we are under a lease. It is at, it, it, we are in a development term is what we call it. It's a lower lease rate where we do not have full uh, real property rights on the land, but, but it is a lease. How long is the lease? How long you said, sir? How long is this lease point? Um, the development period we're under is five years. We're in the third year of that. And then the full lease would extend for 40 years uh, when, we, when we begin the full lease period. Well, to be a to be an applicant under consideration uh, for an economic development incentive pursuant to the county active guidelines, the company must be right now today an owner or a lessee of real property. Yeah. Can yeah. you confirm, Mr. Kimbrough? I can confirm one hundred percent. Swear, swear out, basically. Swear out. Are you actually lease the land right now? That, that is correct. We're absolutely in, in lease of the land at this moment. And the minimums of the lease were included in the application. Say again? Minimums of the lease were included in the application. Thank you. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Tell us about your question. Uh, my name is Garrett Peters. I want to thank uh, the judge and commissioners for having us here. Uh, this process has been undergoing for, uh, I'd say, maybe a, a year or longer that we've been in discussions, and, and we're happy to finally be here in commissioner's court today. Um, as we've already announced, we, we do have a solar project, or we're working on a solar project uh, in Mr. Karbowski's precinct over in the Devers area. Um, we've got a lot of information to share with you today. I'm going to start handing some stuff out. I've got uh, Sarah Linden, who's a developer with Light Source BP, the company developing this project, and James Modi, who's a VP of development, also here with me today. Uh, I am a consultant with Katie Andrews, as you've already heard. If I may approach and pass out some documents, we'll get started. Sure. What we've got right here is a, is a handout with some facts, and then we'll pass you as well as a smaller amount that are bigger than that. Clerk one. Okay. Pardon? Should I give one to the clerk? Or? Yes, if he has spares, yes. yes. She will include those in court documents as well. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so um, as you've been stating, we're here to talk about um, economic development as it relates to this project. Um, of course, what we've given you real quickly is some facts. I'm gonna let uh, James and Sarah tell you a little bit about LightSort BP as a company, um, and then I will uh, come in and talk about uh, some tasks. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Um, uh, judge and, and, and commissioners. So my name is James Dermody. Um, I'm based out of Houston, Texas. I'm Vice President of Development with Lightforce BP. Um, Lightforce uh, it has has a, a is a it is a 250 person strong um, um, solar development company based out of uh, San Francisco, Austin, and maybe someday Houston. We're, we're, we're still working on we're opening our Houston office. Um, we're a worldwide company um, also, so we have uh, you know, a U.S. presence and a worldwide footprint. Um, the, the BP in our name um, comes from a joint venture between LightSource, um, as it originated uh, about 13, 14 years ago, and, and BP, the oil, oil and gas conglomerate company um, that you all are probably very familiar with. Um, it's a 50-50 joint venture. Um, LightSource represents the, um, does the, does the development, and BP is a silent um, financial contributor to, to the company. Um, 
We have, uh, starting in 2019, we've been uh, steadily developing um, projects in Texas. We currently have about 750 projects in operations and in construction. Um, and Trinity River will uh, likely be one um, of, of the projects that takes us over a gigawatt of solar development in, in, in the, text, the state of Texas. Um, I'm happy to elaborate on, on any, anything related to LightSource BP, but I'll let Sarah Linden cover the project specifics. Okay. Sure. Thank you, sir. I'll leave this poster with y'all. Um, it does show some of our work in Texas as well as the project itself, but I'll just leave it here and feel free to browse it later. But thank you for having me. Um, I'm Sarah Linden. I work for Mr. Dermody here, and I'm developing the Trinity River Project. We've been working with the Henderson family, who is the landowner for all of the land, uh, that the project will be developed on, as well as a lot of other land in the area. Been working with them uh, for about two years on this project. We are planning to develop 150 megawatts of, so uh, of solar, and we may include a battery as well that is under review. This project would interconnect on the east side of the project to the micro grid via energy. And we are planning to begin construction on this project in about a year, so in the spring of 2024. And we would expect to finish construction in 12 to 18 months thereafter. So that, that's you know primary uh, view of the project. We're working with the Henderson family to ensure that they can continue to graze um, and you know work with us uh, in any way possible to extend their operations and and use this land as efficiently as possible uh, in the ranching community. Um, we really enjoyed getting to know the school system and have been working with Devers ISD via multiple meetings um, and a $30,000 donation to extend their soul, sun um, shade in the schoolyard for the students. So happy to provide any other details on the project. Do you have any uh, current agreements with uh, Devers ISD, such like a 313 before we they do. you do? Okay. Yes, yeah. All right. Is this is just uh, 30 381 on real property, correct? That's, that's correct. So what we requested um, is uh, economic development agreement related to the particle coverage. So everything that would be affixed to the ground, so panels, trackers, transformers, substation, et cetera. So all of the personal property. The real property would not be abated or, or receive any tax break in any way. It will be, first of all, a rollback would occur. Um, that would be three years of, of back taxes, uh, the difference of the market value and the ad value. Um, and then secondly, all of the land would be converted to commercial industrial valuation, which would be significantly higher. The property currently generates about $4,000 in taxes per year. Uh, so it would be a significant jump in there just in the real property alone. It will rate how much per year? Uh, right now, the county taxes on this property, this 2,400 acres, is $4,077.33 per year. Okay. That's the county alone. That's not all of the other jurisdictions. Yes, sir. Let me uh, let me ask a question right quick, if you don't mind. We uh, okay. Let's say everything's done. Construction's completed. How many employees will this uh, twenty four hundred acre solar farm employ? Covered employees uh, would be would be one, sir. One. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. And that would be, uh, just to give you context here, that would be the industry norm for a project of this size. Um, even a solar project with a $500 million investment, the industry norm would be probably two to three jobs for a plan of that size. Two to three permanent jobs. And then there's operations and maintenance crews that kind of manage a region. So it is contributing to the growth of that operations and maintenance industry, you know, teams that might be seeing to this project as well as others across East Texas. Okay. I have questions now. It's time to ask. 
Judge, I was just going to ask. I'm not going to measure on the uh, Liberty County Tax Assessor Collector, which we work a lot hand in hand with these projects, and they, they're asking mm -hmm. me questions, and I'm trying to get a feed into it. But um, mm -hmm. so you're basically requesting the relief just on the personal properties, basically the ground up. It will convert from ag to commercial and with some rollback plus a new increase back. Would you anticipate the starting or completing value of the personal property? And what is the life expectancy of the panels that you're going to be installed? Yeah, so we're expecting a, a first year taxable value of $200 million. Uh, the life of the project, it's rated as a 30 to 40 year asset. Uh, so it is a long-standing asset uh, that will be there long after any economic development incentives, either with the county um, or the one that we have with the school district ends. And I, I wanted to offer a detail about the, the, the site, the 2,500 acres. 2,500 acres, um, all, not all of those 2,500 acres will have improvements on them. Likely, uh, a portion of that 20 acres will remain in the existing use of the landowner. We won't, we won't either lease that land or if we lease that land, we'll uh, keep it available for the landowner to continue to, to, continue to ranch and use uh, under the existing use. And so the, the rollback would be more specific to the areas. What we would, we would request to, to the county and the assessors that the rollback be limited to the um, footprint of the, um, of the improvements themselves since the rest of the land would go back to its original use. Yeah, once you change the use of it, the CAD course would make that make that call. Yeah. They also make the call on the valuation. Uh, and I'm assuming that like the other 381s, assume that's a 381. Yeah, so so and I'll, I'll clear that up. So there may be some confusion. We originally submitted a, a 312 and, and the county approached us and said, hey, we generally do 381. And so we resubmitted as a 381 um, to answer your question. So it'd be the captured value, the difference in the captured value. And then basically, as that goes out throughout the project, um, and then as it's paid, of course, as in all projects, as the money's paid in, then it's re rebated back portion of that. Yes, sir. And have y'all, uh, is there a proposed percentage or dollar figure or even? Yeah, uh, that's a that's a great question. So what we presented um, is some upfront payments along the way. Um, in the construction and development period. And then we also proposed during the life of the agreement um, that we would uh, make full payments of the taxes and we would be reimbursed based on the covenants and obligations we made to the county. We would be reimbursed of all of those taxes with the exception of $210,000 per year. And that is only for the, uh, sorry, $207,000 per year. But that is only for the county tax rate. We obviously have a, a separate deal with the school district. As you, as you know, it would be fully taxable on the INS when they create an INS rate, which I'm sure they will. Um, and it is at the limited value on the m and tax rate. And all the other jurisdictions will be fully taxed. Garrett, may I ask a question, Judge? Yeah. And we're still talking about Trinity River Solar One, correct? That is correct, sir. You said something about rebate. Where, where can you show me the page in your application, Garrett, where you're asking for a tax rebate under 381? I so the way that we have, the way that we have structured it. Hang on, I'm just looking for your application allegation. Where uh, I, I I see tax abatement 312 all the way through this. Have I missed something? Tell me if I have. I can I can I can handle being corrected. Don't worry about it. No, I'm, I'm not correcting you, and I'll, and I'll be sure to make sure that you have the, the exact document that I'm referring to after this meeting. But the way that, that I believe we've proposed it is the project would pay 100% of the taxes, um, and then the taxes would be rebated with the exception of the $207,000 per year, which is the way that many counties that we've been working with have, have set these agreements up. Um, okay, up well, here. Let, let me just make sure that my client understands what what is going on with your application. Where on the application do you say we want the abatement up front and the rebate behind? As I told Mike on the telephone the other day, such a concept is sort of like getting, if I'm right, strokes and distance on the golf course. 
I'm not sure. On the application, do you specifically say we want the abatement up front and the rebate on the back end? Show me. I'm not sure that I follow, but we would be happy to amend the application if any parts of it are not clear in, in what we are proposing or asking for. Are you clearly asking today what I have just described? <clears throat> abatement on the front end and a rebate on the back end. Right, we're not asking to double dip in any in any way or do anything nefarious. What we are asking for is to pay the full taxes each year and then be reimbursed all of the taxes with the exception of what we've labeled as a pilot, a payment in lieu of taxes of $207,000. If there was a different way that, that we can structure that, we're more than happy to work with the county and, and, and whatever they would like to see. I'm looking at your application. It does not have page numbers. I'm looking at a paragraph called terms of abatement requested. There's a tax abatement requested. I'm looking at the chart at the back. It says with abatement. Clearly, it looks like a 312 agreement to me. I don't see the rebate in it. Are you asking now for the back end rebate in addition to a tax abatement? Yes or no? Based on the application you have in front of you, it sounds like we were asking for 100% abatement with a pilot each year. So the back end of rebate, what we call it, you and I would call a chapter 381 rebate, is new to the application today? The application that you have in front of you, it sounds like we have a 100% abatement requested with a pilot of $207,000 per year which I believe would work out to a 65% overall payment. Okay. Where is the rebate on your application paper today? It, it does not sound like it's in the application that you're reviewing. But that's what y'all want to propose, correct? That is what we would like to propose. Yes, sir. Chapter 381 agreement. Would you agree that a revised or amended written position would be in order, therefore? Yes, I, I believe, as I said five to 10 minutes ago, we would certainly amend as needed. Well, thank you for, I, I, for, for a second there, I thought you had switched gears and I missed it to go to industrial kilo, which I understand to be clearly just a rebate. But the commissioner's court probably doesn't keep up with this stuff like the county attorney, the first assistant, me and you and Mike do. So judge and members, y'all understand Trinity River Solar One's oral presentation today adds something, i.e. a rebate, and they're going to follow up with a document revision later. Y'all understand yes, sir. that? We got it. We got it. I'm sorry to pose yeah. the question, but I needed to get straight in my own mind, an apples to apples, what's going on type of a deal here. Thank you. Yeah. I think regardless of uh, the confusion between chapter 312 and 381, what we're asking me as a consultant, White Source VP as a company and a project company, Trinity River Solar One, mm -hmm. is the opportunity to negotiate with the county. Whether we call it a 312 or we call it a 381, or we call it a partnership, we're looking to work with the county on this project. I think mean, uh, we're doing a pretty good job of that right now. Yeah. The main thing is we get it clarified, and it, uh, it was a 381. Let's go ahead and call it a 381. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Rick, I do have a question on the rollback side. Mm -hmm. Who incurs that expense? Is that going to be the owner or the leasee? Uh, or leaseor? It goes against the land, so it doesn't matter who pays it, you know, so ultimately. Yeah. Be typically, be 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 off. yeah okay. so in the in the lease agreement it's specified that the the the, um, the solar company is responsible for those costs okay. uh, and, and again in your lease i've seen it kind of written down on some something else i've looked at that said any increase in tax liability will be borne by the by the right. company right. uh incurred in, in this case the lease um and, and just for your information the county, this this is definitely different. We the past agreements or partnerships we've entered into, the actual solar company was the purchaser of the land 
and the land is part of everything. So this is clearly uh, different in that you just uh, you're leaving the land still to be taxed, but you're going to be taxed at a higher rate. What I don't understand is the two hundred and seventeen thousand. That was the or two hundred seven thousand. That was the, the the paid in lieu, but that was on land only. But you're still saying you're going to get the land one hundred percent on a commercial rate going forward. Yeah, so that, that pilot number we mentioned is only related to personal property. So you're, you're exactly right. The land will be fully taxable throughout. Right. But we, we don't have any personal property revenue coming in now. That's correct. And so the, you just use the, the pilot to come up with what was the ag contribution on the land before. Is that right? So the pilot is based on what we've done is we've said, hey, if we were to build a $200 million project out there, and what taxes would it collect over 10 years? Okay, we backed into a percentage and said, okay, if the county was to offer us, or if we were to propose the county 65% abatement, that means we would pay 35% of the taxes. So we took that total, that 35% over 10 years, and we divided it into 10 equal payments. And that's where that $207,000 oh, per year is coming from. Okay. Yes, sir. I was getting confused with the, with the ag. <laughs> like, by year, this year, we collected 200 and it is real close to what we've collected on the, uh, yeah, but that's not the basis for it. Yeah. And so just to compare apples to apples, the current taxes on the property are $4,077 per year. That's just county tax. Mm -hmm. Total taxes in the realm of 10 to 15,000 per year between all the jurisdictions, because you've got the average ISD and then I believe you've got one drainage district maybe. Yeah. Um, and the increase we'd be looking at with this agreement would be $207,000 per year. Right. Um, so almost 50 X on the, on the current county. So what do you, what do you anticipate the commercial value and at the current tax rate, what the county would realize from that just yep. on the land? Yeah. So what I would like to do so that we make sure we give you the exact numbers, I think that it would be best if we could provide a fence boundary drawing for you. So you can take that 2,400, I like just the fenced area within there, and then you could generate a three-year rollback calc as well as what the market value would be going for. And, and that would be that. Yeah. The idea again will, and we can work together on that, so then we've right. got something we can all point to and say, hey, this is right. this is the numbers we're agreeing on. I think earlier in the conversation, it was uh, mentioned just 24, 2,500 acres, but they are only going to use a portion of that last bit. But is the entire 2,500 acres going to be deemed commercial, or are they going to still hold ag exemptions on part of it, although y'all have a commercial lease on it? Yeah, so it, generally the, the way I've seen it work in other areas and other appraisal districts, it, it is within the area of change use. So wherever you see the fence boundary, everything inside of that is generally what is rolled back and converted to commercial use. Although at the time, go ahead. At the time that we move into um, the 35 to 40 year lease period, um, which is usually at the start of construction, we define the, the that lease um, boundary, which is usually less than the the, than the, the boundary that we're starting um, during the development portion of the lease. But you already have a lease on the property, are we? We do, we do, and our and our yes, exactly on the whole twenty what is it twenty four yes. twenty four hundred acres. Yes, yeah. so we, but in that lease, we have the rights to release property from uh, the total outline boundary at this time. Does your lease have a, 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 a? I'm sorry. I'm just trying to figure out yeah. how much or how much of this property is going to be now deemed as commercial instead of agricultural. Agriculture we already have. Uh, it's only uh, beneficial to us as the commercial. At, at this point, Garrett's wishing that I hadn't opened my mouth <laughs> um, on, on the whole, you know, smaller smaller boundary. But we, we have those numbers and, um, and and we can work with Garrett to provide kind of a bifurcation of, of current our current current plans. Um, mm -hmm. We've we've been through this process um, through several other uh, county um, appraisal districts from Lamar to Ellis to uh, we're working through it right now in Brazoria. So we we have worked through this framework. Mm -hmm. Um, but we understand you would like to see the numbers and be very able to kind of support that. It'd be helpful. The yeah. question on the lease, does it have a, a, a escalating, like a, um, I guess, a, escalator? Yeah, escalator. Yeah, it, yeah, it does. Um, it escalates annually beginning 
when we start construction. And, and, and th we can't share any more yeah, information. They yeah. have your confidential. That's agreement. absolutely helpful. And again, that's on the landowner side. We're yeah. not interested in that part of it. It's just uh, the lease. It's significant with the lease. I mean, they would assign the lease like they would come forward with it. Right. So. No, I see that there are also impacting a few of my county roads out here. Uh, the type of equipment and to develop this solar farm, um, what are we looking at? Um, my I think it, so I, I have a construction background. Um, the, the majority of traffic on the roads will be with delivery of equipment. Um, as you're aware with the area, it's really flat, and we're going to be building in areas that um, are already flat and out of what kind of out of a wetlands sort of area. So um, the majority of the of the work is going to be delivery of equipment with semi truck trailers. Um, with so eighty thousand pounds. Uh, yeah, I once you cross it, that's that's probably. I mean, it's kind of, it's, you know, that's, we're impacting one of my roads here in Mount Five that just been redone. Our roads are ready to pick eighty thousand pounds. So yeah. then again, y'all would have to go into uh, agree with uh, with Edito. Yeah, what yeah. we're doing with some other counties right now, um, road use screening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> we're going to talk after the one. Okay. Uh, but we would anticipate probably entering via Highway 90 yeah. and then heading down south. But I would not expect that we would be impacting all of the roads with that um, amount of equipment. Most likely, we would have a lay down area or site address along 109. Um, but we're happy to discuss with you and, and Mr. Douglas where the best locations for that type of work is. Yeah. Chet? Yes, sir. Have anything else we need to elaborate on today or we've, we have enough now to go back and get our homework assignments worked out? <laughs> well, um, uh... The company's presentation regarding Trinity River Solon One was the first item on the agenda. The second item on the agenda is y'all's decision whether you're going to uh, uh, continue further negotiations regarding this matter. Perhaps it would be helpful to discuss the project in closed session if you have questions <coughs> or comments. I concur with that. Okay. All right, so we have your presentation. And then come back out after that and, and, and entertain. Uh, it would require a vote to continue further negotiations, I would suspect. Yes. All right, guys. Thank you all. Thank you. Now, the next one is industrial kilo, correct? Hello? Hello. Yeah, yes, that's correct. Yes. Don't yeah, I need to get back in the room and present industrial kilo? Yeah, project, uh, kilo project, LLC. This is a uh, discussion, potential action, Delta Curve Pursuit, Chapter 381, Texas Local Government Code, and other authority regarding the following matters. A presentation, you're here for presentation. Uh, by Industrial Kilo Project LLC Company regarding its proposed solar energy electricity generating facility located, uh, project be located on certain real property totaling approximately 1,069 acres, more or less, and located in Southern Liberty County, Texas, near County Road 486 therein, and pending application for an economic development agreement regarding the project. Uh, also, consideration of approval of further negotiations, if any, by Liberty County, Texas, with said company regarding said project and application and all related matters. 486, Bruce, is that that's your Atchville. zone? Hatchville Road. Okay. That's over by the S curve. That's, that's what we understand. 486 is a number. Hatchville yeah. Road is, by God, it's a location. Okay. <laughs> We've all traveled down. Leon knows that road. David knows the road. Greg does and Bruce does. So, that's the main thing. So uh, what's your project? So thank you, Joe. Yes, sir. Commissioners, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Fry. I'm with Kenny Andrews, the uh, same firm with, uh, that Mr. Peters is with. And I'm here on behalf and, and with the Industrial Kilo Project. 
And this is uh, Elizabeth Hart, and she is with Industrial Sons from the development company. And we have turned in to Mr. Ken Brown to the county, a chapter 381 economic development application. So, which would be for a, a, a rebate of taxes. Yeah. So, and, and, and Chuck, this is a, a true 381. This isn't one that we have a, a question concerning. Is it a 312 or 381, right? I believe that is correct. That's the way I read it. Mr. Fry can speak specifically to that issue. Thank you. That's correct. And there was not, and, and how all this got a little bit like a sideways from the other is there's counties, a lot of counties do it different ways. There's a 381, there's a 312. We'll do a, three, a 312 application. They'll say, well, we're going to do a 381 application. Sure. Right. Some of them set up with pilot payments, like the previous one, mm -hmm. and some are not. But it's always pay your full tax bill and have a rebate on the back end. So mm -hmm. if I may, I'll pass out a little information Please. on the project. I imagine I had the last one. Have y'all got a lease agreement or y'all buying this property? But still, yes, we have an executed lease agreement. We will not be purchasing the property. I'm sorry. We have an executed lease agreement. We will not be purchasing the property. What's the term of the lease? It's um, similar to the previous one. It's for 35 years. Um, we're currently in the option period now, which is three and a half years, and we're about a year in right now. Well, again, you heard my questions before, but uh, an option agreement doesn't mean that you're leasing it yet normally. What's the story, Mike? Does the company currently have an active lessee position in this matter? That's correct, yes. So we are under an option to lease agreement. And they're making payments to the landowner. Correct. On an option. You haven't exercised the option yet, though, correct? The option has not been exercised. Well, the other, Garrett's, Garrett's presentation seemed to indicate that there was an active lease. So in terms of industrial kilo, would you agree with me that there is no active lease position? It's an option agreement with possession. So yes, we're under, we're under um, the, all of the lease terms have been signed off and agreed to. Um, and so what will happen at the end of the option term, once we do all of our due, due diligence, um, we will then exercise the option to go into the lease that already has been agreed upon with the landowner. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question while I'm at it, if I can just interrupt one more time. Of course. Uh, is there an active uh, chapter 313 agreement with the uh, uh, affected school district? No, sir, that was not done in time. So there's not an active 313 agreement. There never was an application that, that was filed. Is the county's participation in the industrial kilo project uh, essential for the project to go forward? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Leon? Yeah, if I might, I might ask these good folks. Uh, Okay, I'm going to ask you the same as I did the, the last group. Uh, let's say everything's done. Construction's finished, and you're ready to flip the switch. How many employees are you looking at? One to two permanent positions, and there'll be other ancillary jobs out out there. You, know, you have your, your mowing and such. and uh, Cleaning up the panels. And we'll have those, those maintenance and operations job, jobs, and then um, we'll have a few permanent jobs as well. Can you tell me what the, can you tell me just off the cuff what their base salary would be? I don't have that information on the top of my head, but I'm, I'm happy to, to do some research and, and try to get a number and, and, um, and send it over to you. Thank you. Okay. Y'all keep going. We, we don't mean to slow you down, but then again. Yeah. 
Your Honor, thanks for having me, and thank you all the commissioners for having me here. Uh, sure. I'm Elizabeth Kerr. I work at Industrial Sun. I'm the Director of Development. Um, I'd like to kind of tell you a little bit about our company first, and then I'll um, dig into um, our project specifics. Um, so Industrial Sun is a purpose-built utility scale solar developer based solely in Texas and um, solely in ERCOT. Um, and kind of what differentiates us from the typical wholesale solar developer is our collaboration with local industrials. We develop and sell our power directly to the industrial clients, um, and we're able to offer them savings on their operations costs. Um, so the industrial sum team, we've participated in the development of 6,000 megawatts, um, and that's throughout the US, um, projects that are either operational or under construction currently. Um, and then currently we have 3,000 megawatts of solar projects in Texas um, in our pipeline to be built over the next three to four years. Um, so uh, Liberty, our project in Liberty County is um, Industrial Kilo. Um, it is a 175 megawatt solar project encompassing over a thousand acres located in the southwest corner of Liberty County. Um, we're currently working through our due diligence right now. Um, we're working on the environmental studies. We're doing some surveying. We're working with ERCOT on the interconnection front. Um, we are also currently in negotiations with industrials located just south of our project to purchase the power from us. Um, we expect to begin the construction on this project in Q2 of 2025. Um, construction efforts we um, expect to last around a year. During that year, we expect to have about 200 construction jobs um, during the, that year of construction. And then we expect the project to be operational um, in Q2 of 2026. And um, as we said previously, that would um, entail one to two permanent operations jobs, as well as some um, maintenance jobs that will be associated with the projects around the, the, the area. Yeah. Yeah. Happy to answer any questions. Um, I thought I could hand it over the mic. Well, you do have plenty of industrial uh, customers that are close by. We do. Yeah. Yeah. And we're, yeah, we're still in negotiations currently, but um, as you know, there's lots of industrial sites just south of um, Liberty County there in the southwest corner. Um, so we're currently working with them and um, can't disclose anything yet, but mm -hmm. that's, that's the thing. Well, sure. You, have to, you can tell those industrial bunches to come see us too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, Rick, you got any questions? Um, just the same kind of approach. You know, what are you asking for? Um, rebate on the Ground just above or ground below? But it wasn't only, no real estate would be included on. Yeah, so since there's a lease, <laughs> yes. so it's basically the same same pattern. And um, but distinguish between the pilot and what you're asking for. Um, well, I mean, that would be honestly, and Mr. Kimbrough probably, he's the legal person here, but. If, if the county would want to entertain you know, with a pilot, that, that's fine, or without a pilot, you know, whatever, in, in the legal way to do, go through the process. There are some counties that would build, even in Chapter 381, we've had experience where they 100% abated it, you paid your taxes, and you rebated, just like Mr. Peters mentioned, but there's like 210000 this project here, we're looking at probably about $211 million investment. Yeah. Right about $187, $188 million would be taxable first year. And then these solar projects are valued, they're put right now, according to the tax code, they're valued on a 10 year useful life schedule, which what that does, it's it's not straight line depreciation. So typically, your appraisal firms, the third parties, they're going to be valuing them. And, They'll usually in maybe year 11 or 12, they may reach the floor no more than 20% of the original uh, investment. So I believe it's 37 something million dollars in change that would be the, would be the value when the same will depreciate. And that would be as long as the projects there it would be valued around 37 million dollars. So and you're asking for a 10 year? Yes, sir. 
some of the property taxes itself, since they will go from ag to commercial use. Um, since you are just leasing the land, the responsibility of paying the taxes is still be the landowner itself, and it would fall back on the landowner's responsibility. You know, if y'all fell through, didn't do anything, then the landowner now is stuck with commercial property and responsible for all the taxes, correct? Yes. The, the, the landowner will be in the name of the, of the property owner. Yeah. Is, I believe that's what you're saying. And obviously, this would be an industrial key of it. So it's covered in the leases, and I don't know the ins and outs of all the leases, of the, what they would do as far as for a clawback or however that would work if something happened to the company. But I'm sure that's covered in, in the leases that I wouldn't be able to discuss. But what happens is once it's once it's rolled back, obviously the, the company is responsible generally in the leases to pay anything above and beyond what it was in actives, the tax bill. And so they're responsible for also paying the rollback. And I'm sure that's in the land contracts also. All right. <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah, if possible, could uh, would you be able to allow me to know who you're leasing, you're leasing property from? Yes, that's um, public. It's in the public record. It's uh, Cedar Bayou Farms is the entity uh, that owns. I'm sorry, Jay. What did she say? Cedar Bayou Farms. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, Cedar Bio Farms. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, I thought they had like a wedding venue down there. They do. They yes. do. Okay. Yeah. We, we worked with them to, um, we built a view shed um, yeah. around their venue. Okay. To protect from the site of the facility. <laughs> I'll be. All right. Anybody want to get married? Well, there you go. <laughs> you got new trees. <laughs> Dave? They're on 486. Yeah. That's a brand spanking new Yeah. And it's a great shot. I've never seen a project like this yet that didn't come in with the carriage pump trucks and the earth movers. Yeah. They're going to tear that project. Um, That's a gift. I, I agree with you. Know, I mean, construction is you know, the messy job, but um, we have a formula. We have a way to deal with that. Commissioner Karbowski uses this quite often. But again, that road is pristine. Yeah. Okay. Only kind And what we're looking here, gentlemen, is the uh this wouldn't start construction until Q2 of 2025. Okay. So you're looking down the road a little bit and take about 12 months to build. Okay. All right. Any other questions, John? Chuck, any more questions today? Uh, no, sir. Th thank you. Mike. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Yes, sir. All right. Catherine, everything good? Thank you. Yes. Sir. Thank you all. Appreciate you coming in visiting us. Yes. Okay. Now, we did uh, have number 18 also considered. That was going to be. Do that in closed session, but all three of these are going to have to be on the closed session, correct, Chuck? Uh, I recommend it, yes, sir. I do too, yeah. Okay, well, then what I'm going to do is ask the court to uh, retire and go into executive session at this time. Make the motion. I need a motion and a second. Make the motion. We're going to go into executive session. Motion from Bruce, a second, and Greg going into executive session. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Uh, Likewise, please. Yeah. Y'all hearing me at all? I can hear you now. Yeah. If you get close up to your mic, I can hear you okay, Leon. It's when you're you lean back, I have a little hard time. Okay. Okay, so we're in at 1047. Oh. Yeah, we're going to take a break for a minute. Yeah.
Since we uh, we are out of executive session, we'll just call that 12.45 p.m. Uh, executive session was held for sections 551.071 and 551.129 of Texas Government Code's consultant consultation with an attorney, or attorneys in this case, for the commissioning court to consult with and seek advice from its attorney regarding certain applications or request an opportunity with the county for economic development and or tax abatement agreements. And also, pursuant to section 551.087, Texas Government Code, which relates to economic development negotiations for the commissioner's court. So that being stated, that's what we were in executive session for, and that's what we've come out of executive session for. Yeah, and Chuck is back with us. Yes, sir. I'm sorry for the delay. Oh, we're good. Okay. Uh, the items in executive session, of course, we've moved. Well, there's 18, 19, and 20 on our agenda. And we'll move to 18, which uh, is in regards to Liberty Solar uh, Project LLC. Uh, Discussion and potential action is discussion and potential action shall occur pursuant to Chapter 381 of the Texas Local Government Code and other authority regarding the following matters. A, consideration of approval and implementation of a proposed economic development program and economic development program agreement, either program or agreement, be executed by Liberty County and Liberty County Solar Project LLC to the company regarding certain contiguous real property located in Liberty County, Texas, a part of the J.A. Williams Lee or survey, which is abstract number 119, that will really relate to the video in that regard. They're in and containing approximately 1,105.846 acres, more or less called the property for the program and agreement requiring the commercial development of other property as the site for a solar power electricity generating facility project to be constructed operated and maintained by the company for a long-term basis and with the program agreement and company project requiring other other, other things a minimum initial facility improvement value of $154,950,000, minimum job creation requirement, the company's proposed donation by deed to the county for authorized public purposes of certain contiguous real property, also located in Liberty County, Texas, and a part of the aforesaid J.A. Williams leak or survey, which is an abstract one more than and containing approximately 37.737834 acres, more or less, which is going to be considered donated land. Other company performance obligations to <clears throat> be timely accomplished by the company for its project to stimulate business and commercial activity in Liberty County, Texas, and in return for such company performance requiring the county to make certain economic development grants and public funds to the company annually as allowed by law during a spe specified grant period of five calendar tax years as stated in the proposed agreement there's a letter b consideration of approval and implementation of a proposed access agreement to be executed by liberty county texas and said company to enable Liberty County, Texas to perform certain land or site suitability studies on said donated land prior to the proposed donation by D and all related matters. Long way of saying what is the court's pleasure at this time? Making a motion to approve. Yeah, a motion for Bruce to approve. Is this just on a 381? 
Yes. There will be two votes required, one for the 381, one for the access agreement. Okay. All right. This will be on the uh, – the first part will be the 381 agreement. Is that still a motion? Make a motion on A, uh, consider approval, implementing the economic development program. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, motion with Bruce, a second for Greg. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Likewise, next. Nay. Okay, that is a three, one. With Commissioner Wilson voting back. Okay, in the matter of a uh, access agreement for this 381. To make a motion to approve implementing of a proposed access agreement. A motion for Bruce. Second. Uh, David. Yeah. yeah. Motion. Uh, second from David. Bruce and David. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. okay, that's on the access. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, Likewise, next. Nay. That rolls up. also three to one with Commissioner Wilson voting nay. That motion does pass. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, in the matter of number 19 on the agenda, uh, discussion of potential action. Uh, this is concerning Trinity River Solar One LLC company. This discussion of potential action shall occur pursuant to Chapter 3 of the Texas Local Government Code, Chapter 312 of the Texas Tax Code. And other authority regarding the following matters A. Presentation by Trinity River Solar One LLC Company, which we had the presentation earlier, regarding its proposed solar energy electricity generating facility project to be located on certain real property totaling approximately 2,400 acres, more or less, and located in eastern Liberty County, Texas, near US Highway 90 East and Farm Market Road 1009. Therein, pending application for tax abatement regarding the project. Consideration of approval of further negotiations, if any, by Liberty County. And that is uh, the question. What is the court's pleasure? Make a motion to continue negotiations with Trinity River Solar One LLC. Got a motion from Bruce. I got, got a second from Greg. Any further discussion? Call for a vote. All in favor say aye. Uh, Likewise, medics. Aye. And that motion carries three to one. Commissioner Wilson voted nay. Moving on to number 20 on the agenda. Is that is that an approval to continue? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, number 20 is uh, consideration of industrial kilo project LLC. Um, discussion of potential action shall occur pursuant to Chapter 381 of the Texas Local Government Code and other authority regarding the following matters. A presentation by Industrial Kilo Project LLC Company regarding its proposed solar energy electricity generation facility project located on certain real property totaling approximately 1,069 acres more or less and located in Southern Liberty County. Which is near the uh, County Road 486 therein, and pending application for an economic development agreement regarding the project. Uh, we did get our uh, company came in and gave us their uh, presentation. presentation. I'm a sales pitch, <laughs> we like to call it either way. And then, uh, there's consideration of approval and further negotiations, if any, by Liberty County, Texas, with said company regarding said project and application and all related matters. That's what is before the court. What is the court's pleasure? We allow our attorneys to continue to negotiate on this project also. Got a motion from Greg to allow for negotiation. I hear a second. 
Second. A second for Bruce. Any further discussion? Call for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Likewise, nays. Nay. Again, that is the three to one vote is approved. Richard Wilson voted nay. Take a motion to adjourn. Thanks. <laughs> got a motion to move, a second from David to adjourn. I'm not even going to ask a discussion on that. All in favor say aye. Uh, we are adjourned. Thank you, all. Thank you, Chuck. I'll be calling you a little bit. <laughs> I've got to head down the road to San Antonio, but I'm on the cell phone. Thank you, Judge. All right. The recording has stopped. Yes, sir. Thank you.